Sagen. Riperile, Moloeni, Jimelang, good evening. Welcome to your Friday dose of Property Insights brought to you by the private property. My name is not Zamantu Mokumalo, but I'm Martha Shingange, and I'm excited to be with you this evening as your new guest presenter standing in for Zama. Now, we are on Facebook, we are on YouTube and Instagram every weekday at 7 p.m. talking all things property related. The private property also has other great shows, uh, whether you are an investor, um, whether you're an investor looking for a new property or you are into farming. Our lineup of these shows starts with the Home Shopper Show, which is on Monday and Friday at 8 p.m. with Chad Viveros. We then have the Farming Podcast with Mbali Noko on Tuesdays and Thursdays for our green-fingered enthusiasts. On Wednesdays, you can catch, you can catch Esther Klassen on the First Time Home Buyers Show at 8 p.m. Remember to like our pages and share the content. Someone needs that information to become a property mogul. Now, to wrap up the week, this evening we are tackling the important subject of managing your credit score. This is an important part and the foundation of your financial goals. Specific to property, as one of the biggest assets one can acquire, it is important to have a good credit score to get your foot into the market and to continue growing your, your property investment portfolio. Now, to help us understand the ins and outs of managing our credit scores, I'm joined by Peter Menon, who is the head of legal at TPN Credit Bureau. We know that TPN is a friend of the private property uh, podcast. We have them quite often on the show, so they are really part of the private property, community, and family. Good evening and welcome, Peter. It's such a great pleasure to have you this evening. Good evening, Martha. It is uh, such an honor to be able to share your Friday night with you and uh, to invite me on your first of the webinar series, first of many, I'm sure. So very honored to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. I hope you are keeping warm uh, this evening we uh it's been a few uh, uh very very chilly cold uh, uh evenings and days around south africa i think everyone even our uh, viewers in kzn they have caught uh, the cold so i really hope you are also keeping uh, warm where you are this evening I, like you said i think the entire country is suffering under the cold at the moment so yeah. yes stay safe stay warm at the moment thank you Absolutely. Now, let's, let's get on with it, Peter. Let's start with the basics, because sometimes we can assume that people know what is a credit score. So for those who are new into, those who have just started working, possibly, and they keep on hearing about a credit score, they don't know what it is about. Can you tell us what is a credit score? Thank you, Martha. Um, I think an important sort of question from the start is what is a credit bureau? Um, because at the end of the day, you've, you've got to understand where the information is actually stored and where the information is kept because it's uh, different companies in South Africa that are registered as credit bureaus in terms of the National Credit Act through the National Credit Regulator um, that are mandated by the National Credit Act to collect credit information um, and other forms or data sets, um, depending on their niche market. Now, as a credit bureau itself, TPN collects information specifically on tenants um, across the country and how tenants pay rental, as well as how um, parents pay school fees. So we've got our own unique data sets. But a person or applicant's tennis school is made up of a number of different factors and uh, specified categories in terms of the National Credit Act, um, whether it contains personal information like a person's name, ID number, address details, contact details, um, as well as including credit information on how a person has perhaps paid uh, the banks, other credit or service providers. So that is included in payment profile information. So each and every single month, those payment records get updated. 
Um, then different information on um, specifically judgments and blacklistings or defaults as what they've called in the National Credit Act is also captured on a credit database. So all of those different categories combined would create a credit score for a specific applicant. It's important to note here that the credit bureau doesn't say whether a person may obtain a credit or not. Um, it's purely based on the service provider um, or the individual financial service provider um, to determine that based on the generic categories or specialized categories that they utilize. But at the end of the day, the credit bureaus store information and they cohesively, holistically set out what all that information means in a scoring. And a number of these credit bureaus do it in a different way. Um, at TBN, we've got a very simple way of uh, scoring applicants from an A to F scoring, A being an excellent applicant to place, whereas F would obviously be on your, on your lower range. All right. So we could almost say that a credit score, it's, 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 it's around your, it, it, it's a measurement of um, a consumer's uh, financial conduct almost. That's perfect. That's such a great summary. Yes. Ah, great stuff. Wonderful. Great stuff. So I think now that we understand what is a credit score and how uh, 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 that information ends up in, in, in their various uh, credit bureaus, and there's quite uh, a few of them, um, TPN being one of those, um, I would like to, 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 to know from you what will then be classified as a good credit score? Um, because I know some, you know, they, they've got a total of 650 up to 700, others up to 800. When can I say that I now have a good credit rating? Um, so quite an interesting question to ask uh, when it comes to the specific scoring methodology. Like I said, every credit bureau sort of uses different ones. Um, and it takes into consideration all the, like you correctly said, the financial um, scenario um, that a person finds himself at that point in time. So a good way of uh, explaining this would be to say, so for example, I've got a store account um, at a specific um, uh, service provider um, and I've got a card and I take out a certain amount or I spend a certain amount on that card. Now, that obviously increases my debt ratio. Um, it makes my debt more. Um, and depending what those payments are and how I make those payments each and every single month will affect the credit score each and every single month. So it's sort of, it, it, it's monthly based. It's not something that, um, and I want everybody to understand this, it's live data sets, so it's not something that gets stored a year ago and then never gets updated. The information must be accurate, correct, and up-to-date, um, and that will create a person's credit score, and a good credit score um, in a very simple answer would be a credit score that is a person is not over-indebted uh, versus the person's salary, and Obviously, in terms of the payment profile records and how they pay those different service providers, like the store account I've taken out, and keeping those payments up to date, meaning that those payments must be made on a certain date during the month, yes. depending on the, on the credit agreement, um, but usually before the first of the month, um, and how that payment is made throughout the term of that actual arrangement. And that will influence a credit score. But a good credit score would be a person that maintains these payments and obviously does not have more debt than what they can actually carry. Oh, that's, that's quite insightful. Now, um, perhaps a personal uh, uh, um, interest question. So when recently I took out a, a, a home loan to buy a, a new house, um, I mean, I've been paying my, my, you know, I've been a good, I've been a good citizen. I pay my accounts every month on time. But then I realized that my credit score actually went down, which was quite surprising. It was, it was a shock because I'm like, here I am doing all the right things that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, what happened there? Ooh, <laughs> very personal <laughs> question. Let's get into this. Um, it could be a number of different factors. 
Um, it could be as a result of there being further debt um, that the debt ratios have actually increased. And as a result of uh, the established income, um, the credit score has decreased as a result. It could be other information that has perhaps been pulled through. Um, perhaps a bond was registered in your name um, and, and new uh, information or, or rather new debt came up as a result. Perhaps there was a store card that you took out during that period of time. So it really depends on a number of different factors. Um, as I said, Martha, um, at the end of the day, what the credit bureau tries to do, or what any credit bureau tries to do, is utilising the, the data that is provided by different service providers, um, et cetera, is to holistically take all that information. So you'll need to have a look at um, your personal credit check to be able to answer that question. Um, if you'd like, we can take this offline and I can have a look at it for you. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. I think what I'm trying to say is yes. that also, if you, when, when your debt uh, uh, goes up, chances are that it, it, it is going to, to, uh, to impact on your credit score, even Most when you're doing the right, the right things. Okay, yes. Because other people might get alarmed and wonder what, what it is that I did because I've been doing all the right things. I'm paying everything on time, but as you, you, you accumulate more debt, that can actually also affect your credit score. Of course, so, yes. So speaking, yeah, awesome. So speaking about uh, uh, the credit rating, um, we've just spoken about some of the things that can that you can do that can actually um, decrease your score. What are those important things that we should be doing to maintain a good credit rating? Great question, um, Martha. Obviously, um, controlling your finances and controlling your debt is vitally important. At the end of the day, you've got to have, let's call it credit, but you've got to have information to be able to have a credit score. But it's controlling that debt and understanding what you can afford and what you cannot afford. Um, another pitfall that I see on a daily basis is that people don't necessarily, um, or they misconstrue how payments should actually occur on their accounts. I think a lot of people falsely believe that they've got certain grace periods perhaps to make payments to um, their service providers, whether that be a rental account, um, whether it be a school account, whether it be, um, I don't know, perhaps uh, your plumber down the road, there's a specific um, time period that you've got to pay everybody. And similar to all agreements that you enter into, there's a specific date that you need to pay. And the myth, I don't know where it was created, that a person might have this grace period in which to make payments. But in terms of the contract that you sign with a party, with the, with the service provider, there's a specific date that you need to make payment on. And if you do make payment late according to that contract and the information is loaded to the credit bureau, which happens in the majority of instances, there's a centralized database whereby all credit agreements and their payments get reflected. Yeah. So if you're late on those payments, or if you even if you skip a payment on that, it has an immediate effect on your credit rating and your ability to obtain credit in the marketplace. So Martha, just as a, perhaps a suggestion when it comes to that, because that's probably the biggest pitfall we see is that yeah. there's a misunderstanding regarding that. If you've got a financial obligation to make payment, whether it be your rental payments or whether it be mm -hmm. something else, there's a specific payment date and you need to meet that. So what a suggestion would be um, specifically on that is that you communicate and you speak to your different service providers, whether it's your landlord, um, whether it's the, the different parties that have granted you credit, if you are going to have a problem making specific payment that month, that the communication um, is sent through, that you speak to them about it so that there can be some form of leniency um, in that regard, that the payment profiles don't necessarily reflect in that way because there is now a different agreement reached between the parties. Wow. But I think that's probably the major two pitfalls is misunderstanding debt and then also how payments are actually made in terms of your accounts reflect every single month. I think that is very important, Peter, because I think sometimes when we find ourselves in difficult uh, uh, situations, for example, during these times, these difficult mm -hmm. times with COVID-19, 
where people, you know, um, some of them have lost jobs and some, you know, they have had their hours uh, 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 decrease and they're not getting their regular income. It's very important that you speak to your creditors and come up uh, to some, some kind of an arrangement. You shouldn't be running away, uh, ignoring those calls when they are trying to reach out to you. Uh, because it can obviously affect you, uh, affect you. And I think we all know that it can actually also take quite a long time to, to recover. You know, it's not something that you can recover in, in a space of a month. It can take quite a long time to recover from a, a bad credit uh, uh, a rating. So it's very important that you guard your credit score with all that you have. And yes, make those arrangements with your, with your credit providers when you find yourselves uh, in, in, in a difficult question, in a difficult uh, uh, situation, rather. So now, um, Peter, I want us to also get to another issue, which seems to be a bit of a, of a challenge. Um, uh, people come out of those difficult situations. Um, things are now looking up. They are managing to, to, to settle their accounts uh, 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 on time. And they, and you know, um, they're just really starting to clean up. But then you find that it takes time with the credit bureaus to 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 update their information. What can I do as a consumer when I find myself in that situation where it's probably been about three months that I have paid up a certain all of my accounts, and you know, I've been conducting myself well again. How do I get uh, your TPNs uh, uh, um, of, 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 of this world to update my information on the system? Thanks, Martha. Great question. Um, I think an important segue into this would be that there is, let's simplify this, there's three different categories of information that usually gets loaded into a credit bureau that affects a person's credit rating. The first is called payment profile information, and that's what we've been talking quite a lot about tonight, is monthly updates to the actual account. Okay, yes. That information stays on the credit record for a period of five years, depending on the bureau. Some only display it for two years, but that information is displayed. And unfortunately, what happens is that once the month closes, and this is why we said it's so important to speak to your creditors, um, and to speak to the people that you need to pay. Um, because once that month closes, unfortunately, that record has been set for that period. Whether it's a did not pay or a partial payment or a paid late will reflect that for, for that period. Then you get into a different um, category called blacklistings. Like some people know that it's a colloquial term we, we sometimes use, but it's actually a default listing in terms of the act. Now, there's a specific process to loading a default listing on a credit record. You need to receive a 20 business day letter of demand, and you need to be a period of three consecutive billing cycles in arrears, which means three consecutive months in arrears. If that is the case, then a creditor could blacklist you in terms of the National Credit Act. And there's a third, um, third category here, which is called civil court records or judgments that a person would obtain. Now, all of these have different retention records. Judgments uh, specifically could, uh, could stay on for a certain period, whereas defaults would only stay on for a period of one year or 12 months. Um, but your rehabilitation is purely based on what you do now. If the accounts have been paid up and you have been blacklisted, it's very possible that you can get a paid up letter from the creditor and it can be submitted right. to the credit bureau. All credit bureaus have a, have a dispute process in which the a dispute can be lodged directly through the bureau um, by, the, um, by the party and whereby the credit bureau now has 20 business days to go and manage that and find out the information from the creditor. Um, and if the information is incorrect, it just gets removed from the bureau. It actually gets masked for a period of 20 business days during that time period. With judgments, very similar also. Um, once you get a paid up letter and once that amount's been uh, paid up, the credit bureau is supposed to remove that information so you can contact the credit bureau about that as well. Um, but payment profile information, unfortunately, is one of those things that only new payment profile information and new activity on your TPN account based on the, how you've paid your new rental 
is going to affect you going forward. But with blacklistings and judgments, um, quite simple process. Um, for all our viewers out there as well, if you do come across something that is incorrect in your credit report, you can contact any credit bureau and lodge a dispute against the information that is actually captured on that report. Um, and through that disputes process, it can be removed from um, any database as well. Oh, great stuff. Thank you so much for sharing uh, that information because it is quite important to know how we can uh, actually uh, speak to the credit bureaus because I think we, uh, we just, we just uh, look at that information and we just accept it. And like you're saying that there are certain times where there could be mistakes that you can then yes. approach uh, the, the, the particular uh, credit bureau and, and have them uh, uh, updated on their system. So oh, thank you so much for sharing that. And now, uh, to our viewers, yes, yes. And we obviously want to make that. ourselves as approachable as possible. So um, at the end of the day, you're more than welcome to contact us directly should you have an issue with that credit report. And our help desk representatives will be able to assist you with that dispute as well. Oh, great stuff. It's, it's absolutely good to know that. Now to our viewers mm. at home, please do engage us uh, in this, engage in this conversation, ask your questions and share your experiences on the comment sections of our social media pages. We would really love to hear from you. Now, Peter, you've been hearing a lot quite from me. Um, I think at this time, I would like to take a few questions from our viewers. Now, I've got a few questions. And the first one is, how would you suggest a positive credit score affects one who is interested in property investment or buying? Okay, so a good credit score is definitely one of those things that the banks take into consideration for bond grant. And depending on, obviously, once again, their parameters based on the credit checks that they perform through their individual credit bureaus, whoever they're going to utilize, is going to affect that. Um, as well as obviously having a look at your debt ratios, uh, your current pay slips, um, what's currently coming in. Um, but a good credit report is going to affect that in a major positive way um, because the credit report shows how you can upkeep or how you have kept up with your financial obligations. And how you've kept up with your financial obligations is a very good indication of how you're going to do so in the future. Martha, you said so beautifully, you need to protect your credit report. Um, and this is one of those things that they are going to take um, most certainly into a larger scale um, um, consideration when they um, base how much they're going to give you, but also um, the payment terms um, of that specific loan, whether that's for a house or another short term as well. Okay. So I think maybe just to latch on that question, um, mm. what would you say one needs to start doing as they are preparing to buy the biggest asset, which is property? So let's say I'm planning in the next uh, year or two years what should I be doing? Uh, you know, those little accounts, should I be clearing them? What should I be doing so, uh, so that by the time I'm ready to go and approach my bank for a home loan, then I know that I'll be able to get firstly uh, that approval. But secondly, I mean, we are all looking for a good interest rate, isn't it? And a, a credit record is a big part of, of that. So what can I do to prepare for, 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 for that process? Um, I think firstly, the most important thing is that you need to know, um, you need to have knowledge. And for you to know what's currently busy going on on your credit report, you can contact any of the individual credit bureaus who will supply you with a free credit report. Um, and that's in terms of the National Credit Act. You can request one from any bureau uh, once a year. So get that free credit report directly from the bureaus. Um, and then using that or utilizing that credit report, either speaking directly to the credit bureau, ourselves can be contacted to explain what the information on the credit report actually means um, and see exactly how you've made those payments. Um, whether you do realize that you haven't necessarily been the best payer over the last year, you can obviously change that. But I think the major thing is knowledge. You need to know what is actually there so that you can change 
um, what is on the credit report itself proactively, like you correctly said, through um, perhaps making payments better throughout the next two years when you are looking for that property investment or contacting your individual credit providers if you do see on the credit report that the information perhaps is incorrectly reflected or that you need to make different payment arrangements with those parties because you see, wow, you're actually really getting behind on this. It is never too late to change and it's never too late to change a credit report. It really isn't. It might seem very daunting, but at the end of the day, there's proactive steps that you can take um, as a consumer. But the first one is definitely requesting that free credit report so that you can see what's on the actual credit report itself so that you can determine what you need to do. Um, and once that's been done, really taking those proactive steps to ensuring that payments are made on time and that compromise perhaps can be reached to certain of your creditors that you might be in arrears with already. Okay, great stuff. So I think we are running out of time uh, uh, quite quickly. It's been quite an insightful conversation. So as we draw to the end of the show, can you just quickly take us uh, through some of the common mistakes that people do which impact uh, uh, their credit ratings? Great question, Martha. <laughs> I, I love to share nuggets of information, so hopefully this will be six. Um, but I can only speak from, from our credit bureau side. Um, I, I think one of the most important things that um, we actually spoke about previously is a kindness is very underrated at the moment when it comes to um, all kinds of financial situations that you might be into. I think specifically on your rental accounts, if you might be in arrears with those or if you have problems in paying those rental accounts, negotiation and communication um, with the individual landlords prior to you not making payment, I think is a very, it's, it's so understandable at the moment. Everybody's having, having some form of problem, whether it's the pandemic, whether it was the period of, uh, of, of, of uh, unrest that we had at the moment as well, or whether it's just the poll, but financial pressure is there and everybody understands that. So I think proper communication with the parties that you do owe money to or might need to make payments to is such an important step. I think people are understandable and they do, um, they, they do want to um, assist where possible. But I think proper communication prior to non-payment is vitally important. So if I can leave everybody with that, that's that would be great. Great stuff. So I think you should be expecting our viewers to be approaching TPN and other uh, credit bureaus to get their credit scores. And I think that is the first step. So please go out there and get those scores. Peter, thank you so ever much uh, for, for your time this evening, for sharing nuggets and your insights around managing our credit scores. It, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so very much. It's been an absolute pleasure, Martha. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Now, we have come to the end of the podcast. Thank you for watching us tonight. I have definitely taken some notes and I hope you at home have also gained a lot of useful information. Now, from all of us at Private Property, have a great weekend at home. Mishlai Seka, stay safe and stay warm. Good night, everybody. Goodbye.